the other additions we've made to the version 3.1 Psychonalis firmware is a whole new setup menu for configuring the e-brake. So the brake input is the uh, two pin uh, four connector plug, which is two active pins on the Psychonalis, and that's used to inform the Psychonalis when you're squeezing the brake. So if I squeeze the brakes, you see that the active brake animation is active, and I let go of the brakes, and then it returns to being just a throttle slider. So previously, there was only one setting for the brake output, and that was the voltage, the output voltage the Psychonalis sends to the motor controller when you're squeezing the brake. In the 3.1 firmware, we've created a whole new menu for the e-brake configuration. So here you see the menu. Uh, the second line of this menu is a preview of the current configuration. So this tells me whether my brake is squeezed or open, so I can see the digital state of the brake lever. And this is telling me that my brake, when I squeeze it, uh, goes to 0.4 volt throttle output, and then that throttle output can be uh, pushed all the way down to zero volts by turning the throttle. And so this is used when you have a motor controller that supports proportional region through the throttle voltage like our Grinfinian and Phase Runner motor controllers. So if we get inside the setup menu, you'll see we now have the ability to configure the logic of the brake signal pin. So most brake levers, most commercial brake levers, when you close the brake, it's the same thing as closing an electrical circuit. So it's like a switch is closed or a button is pressed. And that's very convenient from an electrical signals perspective and it makes it very easy to parallel connect two brake levers under the same line. But it is much more difficult to do a do-it-yourself switch, especially if you're using a magnet and a reed sensor, uh, since the natural behavior for a magnet and a reed switch is that the uh, switch is closed when the magnet is close to the sensor and then when you close the lever you pull the magnet away and that opens the circuit. So if you're doing a do-it-yourself brake cutoff you might actually really enjoy or appreciate switching this to an active high signal where the brake becomes active when the signal is opened rather than shorted. Uh, the next item in here is whether or not proportional regen is enabled. So in the 3.0 firmware we introduced proportional regen and that enables you to have a breakout voltage when you squeeze the brake of say 0.5 volts and then as you turn the throttle that voltage signal drops down to zero volts and that enables you to modulate your braking force with your throttle um, by just squeezing the brake a bit. In the 3.0 firmware, it wasn't an option to disable this feature, and in general, that didn't matter, with the one exception of people running RC speed controllers, where the Cyclonus is not sending a voltage output, it's sending pulses, and if those pulse widths ever vanish, which will happen if you squeeze the brake while you're throttling, then that could cause the motor controller, or the speed controller, as they call them for RC stuff, to throw a kind of fault message. Um, so here, the breakout voltage, this used to be in the throttle output setup menu, we've now moved it into this new breakout menu, uh, e-brake e menu, so this is of course the voltage that the cyclone sends the controller when the brake is pressed, and then this is a new feature which is the minimum braking time. And this isn't something you really would want so much with normal e-brake cutoffs, uh, what this means is if I just tap the brakes momentarily, the cyclone analyst will act as though I held that brake low for a full one second. Uh, this is really useful not on hub motor systems but on mid-drive setups where you want to disable the motor when you're switching gears. And so adding a time delay like this allows you to tap the brake and then you have the ability to switch through your gearing and then the motor will cut out during that brake period and then it'll automatically kick in again after this time has elapsed. So that can be configured. Uh, normally you'd have that at zero seconds but if you want to have a, a long delay uh, you can go all the way up to two seconds from a, a brake tap before the brake is effectively released. Alright, so that's the new e-brake setup menu that didn't used to be present in the 3.0 firmware but has been introduced in the 3.1.